Hi, welcome to Illuminated Tarot. My name is Jenna. Today I'm here to do a collective reading for the week of September 2nd through the 8th. I'm actually filming on Labor Day itself in the morning. I hope all of you are enjoying a day of leisure. Now, if you don't celebrate Labor Day, I do hope that you take time out today to relax, unwind, restore your energy. Um, in typical fashion, we're going to uh, go with our uh, normal flow today. I do have some special announcements that I'll be making towards the end of the reading, but we're going to start out with the Instagram inspiration. Then we're going to move into your collective tarot and oracle reading for the week. As always, I'll be reading from Mark Nebo. I'm also going to be announcing our new book club selection, which is a novel, and I'm excited to be sharing that. We're going to be alternating between nonfiction and fiction every two months. So I decided that one book a month was a little a bit of a reach for me, maybe even for some of you. Some of you avid readers, I'm sure you read multiple books, but for me, one a month is perfect. Okay, let's get started. Now, it was interesting the stuff that came up as I was scrolling last night, you know, calling information on Instagram around the vibe for the week that, you know, there was a big um, motivation around the time we have left in 2024. This comes by way of Young Pueblo. You have four months left to make the most of 2024. The first part of the year was just practice. Now is the time to take risks, speak your truth, listen to your intuition, and build the habits you need to show up as the best version of yourself. Now, I personally have been working on this the last few months, but I'm feeling a little bit of a, a kick. Um, to really step it up, especially around taking risks. It's, that's a hard one, isn't it, for a lot of us? We overthink it or we uh, question you know, whether we should um, make moves in whatever arena you're thinking of. All right, just do it. The, third eye, this, the next one comes by way of Third Eye Thoughts, which was a new Instagram handle that I had not explored before. September 1st, 2024, colon. Welcome to the month where everything falls into place for you. Don't you love that? I want you to welcome September with that intention. Everything is going to fall into place for me this month. How does that feel saying that every day of this month? Say that every time you doubt your path. The next one. Today I learned about a term called a glimmer, which is the opposite of a trigger. Glimmers are those moments in your day that make you feel joy, happiness, peace, or gratitude. Once you train your brain to be on the lookout for glimmers, these tiny moments will appear more and more. The next one. I, li I love that, glimmers. I mean, we all often speak of glimmer of hope, but to think of it as a glimmer, I really like that. I'm going to use that one. The next one. Now, this goes into the energy that I've been picking up on for the week ahead. You can literally feel when it's time to move into your life's next chapter. Yeah, you can. You really can. It's true. If you're tapped into your intuition, you can feel it. All right. The Alchemist. This is by way of The Alchemist. Some of you know who she is. She's very popular, um, spiritual leader in uh, Instagram and YouTube. Go easy on yourself. You were clearing thousands of years of outdated con conditioning. And the last one, which really hit pretty deep for me last night. Healing is the end of conflict with yourself. Healing is the end of conflict with yourself. Oh, and the last one, sorry, I just didn't put a space between these. One more. Your choices now are already activating potential future versions of yourself. A lot of these that I, that I was guided to communicate to you about this morning for the week has a lot to do with the future and around what's coming in and what you've been aligning in your own frequency to receive. Remember that. Remember that. All right. Now let's go into our tarot reading for the week ahead. We're going to start out with some oracle messages first and then go from there. Let's see. And don't mind the leaf blowers. We've got people off of work today. I tried to wait a little bit, but there's a lot of people catching up on their yard work. I may do that, but you know, it's a day of leisure. Maybe it can wait. I've got one of those non-motorized motor mowers, and it's like a workout, y'all. 
it's a workout. But I'm going to go frolic with some friends by the water first. All right. We got to today. Today, go to water. Okay. It's my, it's where I recalibrate my emotions as a Scorpio moon. It's, it's my happy place. Anything besides water, right? With my feet in the water, beside the water. All right. Let's get serious now. So go to the water if you can today. Ooh, protection. Yeah. This timeline, this higher timeline that this feels like it's really coming forward. A lot of people are meeting new people, new soul tribe members. There's new opportunities, new ideas, divine inspiration, sparks. I'm getting sparks. There's some sort of, a lot of you who are looking for a new opportunity in work or in love, it feels like it's a protected timeline. It's meant for you, in other words. It's meant for you. Control room goals. <laughs> I love that. All right, y'all. So pay attention to you are the only one who's in control of your past as far as how you want to perceive your past. There's a, a beautiful... Um, I was talking to Aries about this yesterday around effortless surrender. There's an effortless surrender when you raise your vibration to a high place and you just allow yourself to receive what's next. But I do believe the what's next is very pertinent for the collective right now. And Spirit is saying that you have goals, right, that you know that are within your control because you are aiming for those goals and they're protected goals, it's like whatever you're really wanting to achieve, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. Look at all the, I know that there's controls here, but I got the image of like a clock. Mm, it's only a matter of time. I keep hearing it's only a matter of time. And then the last one, the soul. Yeah, it's, I'm telling you, a lot of us are getting that soul's blueprint activation at this time around divinely guided, divinely protected new chapters. It's all, it's all here for us. It's all here. It's what we've been doing, the, dip, the digging, the deep inner child healing, the ancestral wounding, the karmic clearing, the societal conditioning. This is about moving beyond the outdated version of yourself. Okay. It's not even about the old version. It's the outdated version. You know, it served you at one time. Now you can look back and go, wow, the goals that I had for myself 10 years ago, I'm actually living now. So keep that in mind. I feel like we're really doing a lot of big picture thinking right now. I think it's because of the Plutonian move. Um, I believe Pl Pluto's going into Capricorn and then it's going to go into Aquarius for a really long time. So we're going to be seeing a lot of changes, profound changes around us in our world. And I think a lot of it's being instigated by the collective rising. I know the Schumann's frequency has been rising and there's been some really big energies. Amanda Lawrence was talking about, just like goosebumps. Amanda Lawrence was talking about, she's been feeling waves of energy. She's an energy healer out in um, near Stonehenge. And she was uh, commenting, I think it was yesterday, that this, there's, she's feeling like a whole different energy that she's never felt before of light frequency. All right. So it's exciting, exciting times for the light worker and shadow worker community because it's both, right? We are both light and shadow. King of Wands, I knew it, I knew it. The spark of inspiration now, setting the plans in, the wheel is in motion, a divinely guided, protected path, control room goals of the soul. Beautiful. Feels, feels really intense. Yep. Because, and there's the, there's the card of the light worker. A lot of us are being guided to rest, to trust, trust your past. If, the, if there's anything you take away from this reading, trust your path. This is about surrendering and letting your heart lead the way. You know, when you, when you are connected and tapped into source and you let your heart lead the way, that's all you got to do. Those are the two things you got to do. You, you connect deeply with your inner being and you drop into your heart. And that's all you got to do. So we have the King of Wands. We have the Four of Swords. Deeply healing current. Woo! This one. 
the king of cups. I'm telling you, now everyone's like, I'm going to do something about this. I'm not just going to, this is more do mode. But around our healing work, turning up our light, being guided by our heart. I love that the divine masculine within everyone is coming into balance. Wow. This is pretty big. This is big. This is a very, very significant shift in the collective. Whew. Okay. There's a lot of healing going on on the, on the sides of us now, male or female. The divine masculine is our, the energy that we came in here to conquer, right? Con divide and conquer. So this is, oh, this is what I'm talking about, letting your light shine through that four swords energy, being guided by your heart in all of your endeavors in the exterior world. It's like, oh, it, it just feels, I feel like I just need to leave it there, y'all. I think you, you all know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, I don't even need to go into it. I know you know. All right. And I hope you enjoy it. I was really delighted to jump on last week, last Monday. Um, and I'm so sorry for the noise. Someone's doing some repairs. And that's, you may be, let's, let's take that into account. Four of Swords was, I need to do some tweaking. I need to do some repairs. And now I'm willing to take some risks. The King of Wands takes risks knows how to use, you know, the the bold ambition, but through the heart. It's it's all being channeled in a balanced way. Yeah, but some restoration might have been taking place and now it's almost a lot of us are stepping into um, new new pathways of the soul in our work, in the world and in our connectivity with the people that we're meant to meet and the people that we're meant to be with. All right, let's go into your Mark Nepo reading for September 2nd. I haven't read this yet. Where love is deep. Mm. Where love is deep, much can be accomplished. Shin Shinichi Suzuki. Despite our culture's overemphasis on doing, there is a rightful place and time to get things done. In truth, there is very little we cannot do. Much of the time, we just lack either the ability to envision the dream built or the confidence that we need to build it. Mm -hmm. I remember early on how my grandmother would encourage me to envision even the smallest dreams down through my hands into the world. She would say, see it here, pointing to my forehead. And then she would take both my little hands and say, now see it here. Then she would laugh and say, and soon it will be here. Wow. wow. With this, she would look around the room. Wow, what a what a wise grandmother. Wow, I'm pretty, I love Mark Nepo. This is the book if you're curious. It's in the description box, okay? It is an amazing thing about being human that we can feel something inside and then build it in the world. It seems we have the inborn need to love and to create. At their deepest, these drives of spirit appear to be the same. For through her love, wasn't grandma creating me? Don't we help birth another the instant we encourage them to see with their heart? Don't we help birth the world each time we give someone confidence to build what they see with their heart? Somehow we are meant to wrestle the earth, wood, clay, marble into forms, to seize the air, notes, words, colors, and designs, meant to hold other breathing questions like ourselves and shudder as we part. I go on and on as if to declare that life is worth living. It makes me ask with joy, what shall we fall in love with tonight? <laughs> wow. Wow. To what color shall we devote our being? What instrument shall we be next? <laughs> this is so what I've been, what I, that I was feeling. It's so wild that I, when I do this, I don't ever read the day of the reading. And then when I read it, it just clicks it into place. Close your eyes and envision some becoming that you dream of. It might the dream of a solid relationship or the dream of a home or the dream of building something lasting with your hands. Breathe deeply and envision the dream fully completed existing in the world. Breathe slowly and spend time with this vision. Enter it and circle it. Now open your eyes and look to your hands. Feel the completed dream move into your open hands. Feel your hands pul pulse with the energy of the dream waiting to be built. Where love is deep, much can be accomplished. 
Wow. I'm kind of speechless. I'm kind of speechless, y'all, with that. That's everything that I was feeling in the reading. But but set so poetically. That's what I love about Mark Nepo. It's so the the poeticism and the lyricism and the depth of emotion and the it he moves me. His words, his writing moves me. It just simply moves me. And I, I really I love a lot of different writers, but he's he's a fave. All right. Let's pull our self care for the week ahead. And then we're going to talk about the book that I recommend. Wow. I, I still can't believe that. King of Wands, King of Cups, Four of Swords, Protection, Control Room Goals. <laughs> it's like Mission Control. Are you connecting to your soul? You hear it. You hear it. It's in your hands. It's in your third eye. Wow. All right. What is this? That's why I really enjoy doing these readings for you all coming together. I feel such a beautiful uplift, upliftment from the collective that tunes in. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Spirit, for presiding over this reading. I need to acknowledge you. I did not in the very beginning. Thank you. <sighs> okay. What is the self-care? All right. So take the top one. Take the top one. <laughs> and this is, oh, what a beautiful mantra for the week. It's about your personal power. I find peace wherever I go. I find peace wherever I go. It's true. Be an instrument of peace this week. See what happens. Even in the most tumultuous situations, we can find small moments of peace. As you move throughout your week, take note of things that bring you peace and calm. Maybe it's a tree moving slowly in the wind, clouds floating in the sky above, or the soft murmur of someone you love speaking in the other room or from afar. Remember you have the power to access these small moments of peace whenever you need them. Mm. What are the other two? I'm just curious. I release the idea that I have to do everything on my own. I deserve to show myself the love and attention I give to others. Beautiful Food for Thought by Alex L. All right. Now, our final portion of the reading today. I, you know, what's the story behind this is that this is called Remarkably Bright Creatures. Isn't it beautiful? It kind of goes with my backdrop. I got this book for Father's Day from my father. He's a beautiful nature lover and animal lover. And my mom snatched it and read it. I went to visit them earlier this summer. And I kind of had my eye on wanting to read it. And my dad had yet to read it. And so when I came home and I really wanted to read something, I only read like the first chapter. And mom said, you should read this. And I asked her, I said, do you think this would be good for a book club selection? She's like, yeah, yeah, because it's really about an unlikely friendship between this octopus and an elderly woman. And after she goes through a really deep loss, and he kind of helps her, it's like a mystery. But this, what's beautiful about it is you realize how intelligent animals are that we don't give them credit for. While I was home, we actually watched a new documentary on dogs. And it's fascinating how when we really start studying different animals, the consciousness, the intelligence behind these animals that we don't even understand enough of, especially octopuses. I'm telling you, octopi. Is that how we say it? Octopi. Anyway, I'm going to uh, read you just the first sentence. This is going to be the book club selection for September, October. And I'll be writing about it on my blog, on my website. All the links are going to be below if you want to chime in. Tell, you, some of you have probably already read this because I think it came out about a year ago. And I love the Pacific Northwest. It's kind of set in a fictitious town in the Pacific Northwest, and it's written by someone who lives out that way. I think she lives in Puget Sound. Hmm. Oh, she lives. She was raised in the Pacific Northwest, but she lives in the suburbs of Chicago. Shelby Van Pelt. This is called Remarkably Bright Creatures. A charming, witty, and compulsively readable exploration of friendship, reckoning, and hope that traces a widow's unlikely connection with a giant Pacific octopus. I already read the chapter where 
she discovers him. And she's, she's basically the cleaning lady of a aquarium. And she discovers him out of the aquarium one night and really confused by how he even got there. So I think it'll be a delightful read for everyone. I'm looking forward to talking to you all about it as the next two months progress. So, um, like I said, I can read about a book a month, but I just wanted to give people who maybe who don't have the time, to get, two months seems like an appropriate amount of time to, let me look at the card, yeah, Page of Pentacles. I was like, what's at the bottom? What's at the bottom? Yep, plans are being made. There's new chapters starting. You know, what, what may be a tentative step forward um, in a new chapter, it's going gonna, it's gonna to end up being quite something quite extraordinary. For, for the collective. It's a big week. It feels like a big shift. All right. So my final portion, I wanted to let you all know, I made the announcement a while back that I was going to be doing weekly readings. And boy, have I labored over this decision as a Libra. Oh my God, what do I do? Um, I realized committing to something like that, doing a weekly read for uh, everyone, I average about, you know, a, a reading a week for every sign. And the idea of doing four, right? Then you add on mid-monthly and monthly. That's six readings per sign per month. And I thought, wow, I'm really impressed when readers can do that. However, I have another business where I actually have a private practice, a healing practice, hands-on healing. And it's, I've had it for 10 years. I'm not ready to let it go. I, the writing's on the wall, y'all, because I have big plans to create a Patreon community where I want to um, basically create... Um, I wouldn't call it a school. I want it, It's more of a community of consciousness and transformation and taking people and guiding them through um, a, a collective growth process, things that I've incorporated in my life. I have a very um, interesting background in, in uh, health and healing and transformation, metaphysics, yoga, um, nutrition, uh, everything you can imagine. I've been a triathlete. I wrote in college, like, I just feel like I'm all about health and wellness, but also that's married to spiritual beliefs, growth, metaphysics, all of that, the transformation and evolution of consciousness. So at any rate, I digress. I decided that I could not handle doing weekly readings. It was just going to be too much for me. So I'm still going to be doing my normal, you know, once a week for every sign. I have to just what I realized too about being a content creator to avoid burnout is to not feel like I have to do anything. It really is when you're connecting deeply with spiritual work. Uh, this is no judgment against anyone who's highly prolific and productive and runs a very tight schedule and produces a lot of content. But for me personally, if there are days that I just don't feel it moving through me, I'm not going to force it. So that being said, I'm not going to be doing weeklies. But I will be here just as often as you've seen me, if not more, as the year progresses, because I do have plans to pull away. And I also, I had to either give up my private practice and my other business, which was my baby, or um, not do personal readings. And for now, the personal readings are very important to me to provide. So, because I do uh, astrological reports that are based on an ancient divination system that are actually based on a, the playing card deck. And those are really deeply discounted. It's just a written report. And then I do private readings with the tarot. So both of those I offer, they will continue to be offered um, for as long as I can handle the, the flow. So thank you for listening to the announcements at the end. And thank you for being here. Go out and frolic and enjoy the day. I'm sending so much love from from this this uh, corner of the woods, from this um, light worker to another, I really, really appreciate you being here, and I'm really, really glad that you exist. Thank you. Take care. I'll see you soon for the September overviews. I started, I uh, released Aries and Sagittarius this morning. I will be getting back probably tomorrow to start the uh, rest of the zodiac. Take care, you all.